Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Occultus Anonymous, um, where we are continuing our ongoing and mini series for Star Trek Adventures as Drew takes a break to recuperate and plan all sorts of other craziness uh, for our main Mage the Awakening game. Um, we are, as always, brought to you by Roll20 and um, our sponsors like you, specifically Perry, Josh, Ryan, Secret FFL, Bernie, Vulcan Lunch Meld. If you want to know what that's about, <laughs> join us on Discord. Discord. Um, John, yeah. uh, without an H, uh, Moku with two U's, Funzu Suru Ali, uh, Zoltan, Melissa, Chris, George, Crazyman1772, Red Shirt, Thomas, Michael, Puppeteer, Long Live the Queen, Jenny, Other Guy, Adele, Chexara, Clara, Catfeathers, Buck, Taryn, Foog, Ms. Grumpy, Shane, all I want to do is be stepped on you, you giant woman, giant woman. Um, <laughs> if you want to know what that's all about, join us on Discord. Uh, John, Mozart, D. Minor, Alzrit, Noba, Alexander, James, Al, Klaus, uh, Raffio, Milo V3, Vortex Falcon 00, Jules, Best Boy, Sean, and Porter. Thank you very much. Um, the funds that you contribute towards uh, our efforts here help do things like pay for art and replace equipment and things like that. So uh, we really appreciate um, your support. And I lost my script. Um, all right, uh, we are playing um, Star Trek Adventures by Modifius, um, which is a really fun uh, little system. Uh, for those of you that come from the old school role playing, we still using D20s, but low numbers are good, high numbers are bad. Uh, ones are like criticals and 20s are like critical fails. Um, we are using the Star Trek intellectual property, but that is the paints, brushes, and canvas with which we are painting a word picture for you to enjoy. Uh, Star Trek is um, an intellectual property that lends itself very much into verisimilitude and detail and what ships go where and how many exact crew members there are and where this person's quarters are. And that's all fun and I'm totally there, but that's not what we're here for in this um, uh, in this little entertainment that we're presenting. Here we go. Uh, last time on the Cult of uh, Vrilla, um, Lieutenant Colin, was given an offer to re-enter the trials to complete them and actually ascend um, with the rest of the candidates. Um, and uh, said she was going to think about that offer. I don't remember if we actually got to you saying yes, but I think that was your intention. No, um, I agree. Because ah! once... <clears throat> um, her queen was in a an interesting emotional state when all this was going on, so uh, Vrilla capitalized on that and used that to get some supervised computer time with her queen looking stuff up for her um, and uh, learned a bunch of interesting stuff. Um... And also kind of made the queen realize that she had no idea where all the candidates come from and was surprised that she had never thought of that before herself. Um, and when Villa left, the queen was kind of digging in, throwing up all kinds of open windows and stuff on the holographic display. Uh, Dr. Hudson had a conversation with the servitors. Uh, it turns out that they are something of kindred spirits. Um, and the servitors, um, 264 and 251, that talked to Dr. Hudson about expanding um, their role. Uh, that led to an exploration in the in somewhere else um, within the city. You think it was within the city, but who really knows? Um, and you were taken to um, a very advanced laboratory, which appeared to be all about genetic manipulation and uh, splicing and growing clones and things like that and were introduced to the last or the only surviving sample of the ancients who are apparently the progenitors of the queens during that visit there which is very much like a kid in a candy store there's so much technology and so many goodies to get your hands on um, you also observe that there were a lot of sensors and it appears that the caretaker this enigmatic entity that sort of manages everything going on um, is observing everywhere. Just not, not everywhere, everywhere, but most places where people are. Now, there was a bit of a crew meeting where you guys compared notes um, and kind of set on a, a course of action, which happened in the, the medical lab with the servitors off in the background. They didn't appear to be paying close attention. 
Um, of important note, you did not have this meeting in an area that was not supervised by the caretaker um, because you felt that that would have been more suspicious. Right. Uh, so you're sort of gambling that the caretaker has so much data that they're processing that this wouldn't show up unless it was flagged for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, we had some bold action in the arena. Oh, yeah. Uh, Captain Chuchulor deciding he didn't want to wait for the games to be resolved in a couple of weeks to get an interview with the Queen. Decided yeah. to try and impress one in the stands. It was sort of a Hail Mary pass. He had no idea how, no relationship in any way. So he just tried a whole bunch of different things to draw the attention of the Queen. And finally, as a last dish effort in the middle of combat, um, he started reciting poetry um, and uh, paced the combat so that it matched the stanzas as he was reciting them. And as he finished the uh, epic poem, finished off his opponent. And that apparently drew the attention of one of the queens. Um, and that's where we left off. Did I miss anything? Commander okay. John did nothing. Check. <clears throat> <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, just, yeah, Commander Nurjad is off. Actually, we haven't seen anything yet, but is going to go find about malcontents and non-conformists. Yes, and I have a special <laughs> scene just for Nurjad tonight. So um, let's uh, roll that intro. Oh, yeah, that's me. Space, the final frontier. These are the brave adventures of the Starship Curie whose three-year mission is to explore new worlds, to seek out new civilizations, and to boldly go where no one has gone before. (laughs) Okay, um, so that brings us back to our current state of affairs. I can close that. Sorry, scrolling traffic in my head. Um, and let's, uh, we're, we're going to do a bit of a flashback here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the camera sort of opens up on board the USS Curie. And uh, Captain Tuchelor is in his quarters. Um, you're off shift. Uh, somebody else has got the bridge right now. All right. Um, it's a couple of days after the pathogen incident. Hmm. Things are still a little tense with the crew. Um, they're also very tense with the counselors because the counselors who are trying to help people work through the things they experienced themselves were going through those experiences as well. Um, yeah. So there's still a lot of un- unsettledness and uh, tension in the crew. It's kind of kept you a little bit busy. Um, but uh, you finally got things to a sort of stable place where you feel you could take a few hours off to catch some Z's. Wonderful. Um, and you're in your quarters when the bell, like the enunciator at the door, uh, beeps. Yes. Um, the door opens, and Commander Levine is there. Um, she's got a determined set to her jaw. Mm-hmm. Um, if you didn't know better, you'd think that she was, like, worked up for a confrontation. Oh. So. Well, uh,. He was, you know, in the throes of lethargy, or at least attempting to collapse into it. And let's assume that uh, he had already taken his, you know, jacket off, right? Um, But not his pants. So he wasn't fully undressed. He was just probably like reclining on his couch or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, He says, "Um, well, come in. Thank you. Um, and she comes in. Um, and then she looks like she's about to speak and then turns and marches a couple of paces <sighs> and then turns again um, and says, I I think we need to talk about what happened. I agree. I assumed we wait till both of us were a little more rested so that uh, we could finally have some kind of interaction where we weren't in an impaired state. That's part of the problem. Um, But if this is a bad time, we can do it another. Is this going to be an official interaction or personal interaction? 
personal. Well then, Winona, now is, I guess, just as good a time as any. Would you like anything to drink? And he goes up to get himself uh, a finger um, of whiskey. Synthahol or actual whiskey? Actual whiskey. It's an Ew. important moment. So if if you're off, like if, if actual booze is on offer, I will yeah. absolutely have a couple fingers of that. Sure. Here you go. And you know how I work. <laughs> um, can I sit down? I would enjoy it if you did. Um, she picks a seat on the opposite end of the room from you. There's mm-hmm. a little table and a chair, and she sits on the chair and crosses her legs. Um, and um, looks like she's about to sip at the um, alcohol that you gave her, and then just pounds it back and puts it down. And then before she speaks, um, he says, Look, you seem to be in a determined state, and I don't at all want to suggest or declare um, the manner in which you communicate with me right now. Remember, first and foremost, we're friends, and you don't need to enforce some kind of social barrier in order to get me to listen to you. I appreciate that, dear Lord. Um, With that said, please continue at your level of comfort. I've been rolling over in my head, happen, and I know intellectually that there was a pathogen um, that was lowering inhibitions, and no one is responsible for the actions that they took while under its influence. And I get that. But I think we both know that those inhibitions didn't, like the lack of inhibition didn't create the feelings that we acted upon. And I'm having trouble processing that. And then Chichilor sips from his whiskey and he leans back in his chair and he says you're having trouble processing the fact that you're attracted to me and that you're attracted to me and she purposely recrosses her legs the other way I don't have trouble processing that fact I mean that was the entire reason why we set firm boundaries in the first place because we value each other and we wanted to make sure that if anything happened it was within the context of both of our respective comforts and preferences and also making sure that it didn't compromise the important professional relationship we have. Yes, I do know that. Why would I need a rule to avoid romantic interaction with someone I'm not attracted to? And And I know that while I'm under your command, it just can't happen. It's a bad idea for it to happen. It would be bad on numerous levels for both of us and for the crew and for the ship. Having said that, I do kind of want it to happen. You know, there's always something satisfying about giving in to a restrained impulse. Because you get to experience the elation brought on by delayed gratification. You also get to avoid thinking about things in the moment. Because oftentimes you're just so distracted 
by getting what you wanted, then all the consequences fade into the background. I care about you, so I'm not going to lie and suggest that I don't want something with you, especially after having experienced the first taste of it. And then he sips. <laughs> you know how important this mission is to me. And you know how important the crew is to me. Everyone's comfort, their safety, and professional responsibilities. This is what I suggest. Provided that it works for you. We'll give it a little thought, okay? Just give it a little time. It's only been a few days. If after, you know, a week or two, we still feel like this is going to be the best thing for us, keeping in mind all of our professional responsibilities, then you and I We'll explore that blank slate. We get to know each other without having the lingering experience of an uninhibited interaction hanging over our heads. Because honestly, Winona, if you and I are going to be a thing, you damn well better believe we're going to do it the right way. That's not a bad idea. Oh, shit. Better than the one that I had, anyway. I didn't come here just to weep and moan about wanting the candy that I can't have. I came here with a plan. What if I were in for a transfer? To the Syracuse. Well, <sighs> then and he knocks it back, and, <laughs> and then he, he knocks, knocks it back, back, and then he fills it up again. <laughs> she holds out her glass as well. He gives her more. Mm. Uh, my uh, wing commander, Captain. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> you mean our wing commander? <laughs> um. Uh, he's right there with you. <laughs> um, so he says, uh, he says, I honestly didn't expect to crack this open so soon into the, into the mission, but I'm glad that I did. Uh, I have to be really honest with you. Transferring to the Syracuse, I don't think would make this any easier for us. Do you know anything about, well, my interactions? with Captain Shivari. I'm aware. Oh, you are. And with that in Three mind, you suggested <laughs> we begin a relationship after you transfer to that ship? I am posing it as an option. I know that there is a history with you and the captain. Um... <laughs> But I also know that that there's something here. Why we're having this conversation, indeed. You talked about a clean slate and getting to know each other without this hanging over us. Transferring you to the Syracuse would be a great way to do that. It might. However, it would also be prioritizing the relationship we might build over everything you get from this crew and the crew gets from you. And that seems like an unreasonable conflict of interest. Listen, the way I think about it is this. That would already be arguably a breach of protocol. And 
I can't imagine that Commander Kitneal would be very happy with me if I made that choice. Although it would be my choice, <laughs> he's not a subordinate. He is my partner in this endeavor. So, if we're going to breach protocol for the sake of indulging a legitimate burgeoning care and intimacy between us, we might as well do it in the context where we can have support from the people who already know us the most. If it's going to happen, might as well happen here. If it is to happen. And regardless, I will always care about you. Sam goes here and she just holds up the glass and the post. I can bide my time. Think of it this way. If it's something we both want and it's meant to be, it'll still be there. I'm a fighter jock. I don't find the whole fate thing too much. But. <laughs> now, remember, although I'm very committed to acting boldly, I also know that the good things last. So, it isn't a matter of fate. The things that you're convinced, the things that you want, don't suddenly just disappear on a whim. And I think our affection for each other is not fickle. However, we need to confirm that our desire to bend the rules for the sake of building on it also isn't just a whim. That makes sense. It is still very fresh in both our minds. Indeed. Hence why I was trying to get some sleep. Thanks, Eva. <laughs> Thank um, you. She sits on a glass um, and gets up and holds out her hands to offer her hug. Oh, yeah. He accepts it. Uh, while you're in the clinch, she says, uh, Good things are worth waiting for. They always are. And then she steps back and says good night. Good night. And turns and leaves. All right. And he sits down. You see a brief, you know, like 30 seconds where he's shaking his head <laughs> and wiping his brow uh, and finishing the drink and then looking at the bottle and thinking about having a third. And then he shakes his head and closes it up and puts it away and then heads to bed, turns off the lights. Commander Kitnil to Captain. I feel like something happened here. <laughs> <laughs> Everything okay, well, sir? <laughs> well, Commander, we'll talk about it in the morning. <laughs> we'll tell you when you're older. <laughs> um, so you guys are sitting down to uh, a poker game while this was going on. Yep. Um, and uh, Commander Levine is a little bit late, but she's right. rushing in. <laughs> Um, you know, this is how we're going to say that. Sorry, I, I had, had to take care of some stuff. <laughs> and, um, like... and you guys all gather around the table and uh, deal out the cards and start playing a few hands. Um, poker, poker notes right here. Good. Um, so sort of uh, 70s show with the table and the camera in the, in the middle of the table. We'll start with the camera focused on uh, Lieutenant Coleman. Um, this is just like a few days after the resolution of the pathogen incident, but you guys have had a pretty busy couple of weeks with the subspace anomalies and, and unknown pathogens and all that kind of stuff, and things are kind of tense, but uh, this is sort of a chance for the senior crew to compare notes and relax. And so what do you have to start with? Just a quick, like, mm -hmm. cast. We've got the three of us, Jiffis, Levine, uh, Javor. No. No. Just senior staff. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Cause, okay. Yeah. So it's a Coleman, Hudson, Levine, Kitneal, uh, and uh, Jiffis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, Levine, um, the brat. Yeah. I'm just going to. Let's probably place like a sizable bed. Okay. 
the 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 bold opening. Yeah, we're gonna start strong. Okay. Um, and we go to Doctor Hudson. Immediately fold. <laughs> 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 He's not even done placing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I want to be clear. Maybe hasn't even looked at his cards. Right. Nope. <laughs> um, when the uh, lieutenant we... comes out swinging, just no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Levine kind of scoffs a little bit. She's. Um, one's all loaded for bear, and the other one turns tail immediately. Well. Um, I'll raise. Um, are we all kind of okay after all this has been going on? Um, and the camera moves over to Commander Kitney Owl. Mm. Who, who, like, jacket is undone and open. Mm. Like, this is, like, the hair is disheveled. He goes out of his way to be like, I am off fucking duty. Um, and makes a show of it. Um, uh, but looks and, no, I... I think this is fine, and you know, kind of look o- looks over to Doctor Hudson and back to Lieutenant Zagolnin and goes, "This is all pretty in character with everybody." Uh, I feel fine. Uh, all right, um, uh, uh, Jeffus uh, says, I, "I understand, you know, the desire to appear normal, but uh, I think it's safe to say that most of the crew is still recovering from the series of incidents we've been through recently." I know I've been struggling with a few things myself. Um, and he just um, um, does a small raise. And we're back to Lieutenant Zakulman. I feel like people might be struggling, but I think... I feel like this might be good for a lot of us in the long run. Hudson? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess we can just keep going the race, because I'm not folding until I lose, basically. Sure. There is the old adage of what does not kill you makes you stronger. Now, my medical sort of knowledge would give me a load of examples of why that's not true, but I think in the spirit <laughs> of it, um, <laughs> what is intended to say is that you uh, have a chance to grow from things that uh, befall you. Like sort of loosening of inhibitions and might help people come to terms with things that they might have been hiding. Hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. The kid deal nods and says uh, that is actually something I've prompted the counselors to bring up: is they should not be treated with shame or. Um, uh, something that we should not talk about um, so long as uh, wounds are mended, both emotional and physical. Um, this is a time for people to get a little introspective, perhaps, and look at what their personal desires might be, some things that they haven't confronted before, and think about what that means to them and grow from this rather than treat this as a some kind of shameful experience. Some people were caught in compromising positions. Uh, you, you, you get a dagger glare from Levine. Right. <laughs> um, and like, and he straight up looks at her and just grins. Um, and you know, senior staff, and you know, those in below decks. And this is not something anybody should be you know, upset about uh, so long as it is addressed and um, it is being addressed in your department, right, Levine? Of course. (laughs) I'm just going to, like, kick him under the table. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Have you sorted out uh, your sort of change of pace? You seemed very comfortable in the in-charge position when the captain was... uh, uh, incapacitated. <laughs> and, and like, there's a moment where he like, I'm setting my cards down. Excuse me. Uh, I have, yeah, I have not 
been shy about my interest in <laughs> command. I am the XO. This is not something anybody is surprised about. Did I enjoy it? Yes. Did I relinquish command once the captain was deemed fit? Yes. But yeah, no, I, I quite enjoyed it. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, uh, Jif is, it's like the conversation seems, that last bit of the conversation seems to be like Jif doesn't have a context process. Um, so he just sort of files it away as something to dig into later. Um, and he does a call. Uh, let's get everybody to do a roll. Oh, yeah. Levine. Um, I don't know if everyone remembers the poker rules. Uh, logic and odds tracking could be reason and science or security. Bluffing would be presence and command or security. If you're reading your opponent, that'd be insight and security or medicine. And gambling on the outcome is just daring command or daring and security. So whoever yes. you want to slice it. I should have used my focus. I did use my focus. Good. Because if this isn't <laughs> team dynamics, I don't know what it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, daring and command. I also, have better Dr. stats. Hudson is um, next to Jiffus. And like they sit there together just trying to be like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's like there's a whole other conversation. Gets, like, <laughs> yeah, I think Dr. Hudson gets like halfway through a com like a, a sentence of trying to explain the context of all this and is like, N -n 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 -n. Nah. it's really not worth the time. <laughs> Uh, Listen, so, I'm a human, and I will tell you, this just isn't. I have better stats for reason science, but I feel like right now, Rilla is right, yeah. just gambling. <laughs> so we're going to go with uh, daring security. Sure. But you don't have bad of either of those, if I remember correctly, right? It's only one die less, yeah. For one number. Yeah. Trip. Right, um, and uh, Jiffus, because he doesn't do bluffing. <laughs> also, I had a, in the back of my head, especially because we were all like department heads and stuff like that, that some of what is occasionally bedded is, uh, bedded? Yeah, sure, um, is tasks around the ship where it's like, oh, yeah, this thing needs to be done. And everyone goes, oh, we don't want to do it. Um, and yet, um, which makes it really fun when, like, the fighter jocks are over here having to scrub, you know, whatever, you know, external. Well, OK, I don't know. Zero. G well, it's still it's still work going outside yeah, the ship. But yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, based on that, I'm just going to go off the die rolls for the ties. So one in 15 is uh, 16. Um, Levine gets a 20, um, and Jif has got a 23. So Ooh. that hand goes to Commander Kitneal. Well done. <laughs> uh, yeah, scooping in my pile of chips. Um, and no, uh, the big thing at, that I think we should all take from this is that we all have things that we want. Uh, some people are kind of already living the life they want and kind of nods to Doc Hudson, who's like, this is <laughs> I didn't really notice too much. I I do what I want to do already. I feel, yeah. um, you know, and some of us have things to look forward to. And some of us might have things we want to do, but can't within the rules. On your foot. <laughs> oh yeah, and like I'm sure Kidneal Kidneal makes a no verbal reaction, but like there's winces and, and like and plays it up like very clearly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I unless there's something else somebody wants to fit in during the conversations and stuff that kind of hammers what I was going for. Right. The 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 evening. one thing that Kidneal does kind of drop to the whole department uh, or all the seniors is like, listen, we've all seen people without being governed by rules and the ship didn't explode. Uh, so if there is some stuff and especially we've been on this journey now for we three years in. No, no. you're still in your first year. First year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, like if there are some rules across the ship that we need to reconsider. Like there, there's no backup coming right there's no new crew 
that are, I mean, there may occasionally be new crew that show up, but they're playing catch up to us. So as far as I can think of, Craig, like we're not going to get new crew until we come back, right? Yeah. So it's like at this point, if we need to make adjustments and deviations from standard protocol, we're getting to sir, know each other and change with all, with all due respect, sir, that might set Jeffus and his engineers back 47 years if they have to redo the protocols. I, uh, and and Jeff is just uh, that that won't be much of a concern. We've actually <laughs> relaxed things. Yeah, and like, I think that gets Kit Neal into a spot. Oh, you guys, yes, hang on. Uh, and like, gets up and goes to get the like the slim down like protocol book and protocol. sets it down and awesome. goes look at what Jiffus and his team have done. And because I'm sure once Jiffus started on it, it's now this streamlined. I mean, it's still got several pages. It went from 38 chapters to 15. Right. And it's like, look at this. And, you know, the the the, the, the poker game pauses for a second while everyone looks through and goes, hey, this is this is actually a reasonable, <laughs> you, you know, tool. Uh, yeah, and, and Hudson's just like, well, that was my one attempt at a joke. What? <laughs> it did not work. <laughs> it did? Uh, it did, plainly did not for him. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and just to cap that off, uh, Levine gonna, is going to throw it. One thing that I learned that was really driven home by all of this is how everybody on the ship has each other's backs. So long as we can keep it up. So long as um, everybody looks out for one another. Yeah. And the camera fades out as you guys start another hand. All right. Um, and then we'll do a uh, fade wipe. It's just to, Star Trek, not Star Wars. <laughs> to um, Captain Chuchulor, mm. um, who's just standing um, in the arena, having made eye contact with the queen, who is you know, a little bit flushed. Um. And uh, the normal procedures go through uh, after a bout. Um, but then there's a sort of interruption. This large specimen. Um, you, you're not familiar with the race. It's, it appears to be some sort of uh, um, amphibious mm. race of some kind. Yeah. Um, with a pronounced like head frill. No. Oh. Um, but by human standards, this would be like an excellent specimen. Like okay. muscular and well-formed. Um, mm -hmm. comes up to you uh, and says um, someone would like to speak to you. If you'll come he, with me. He, he motions and says, of course I will. All right. Um, you are taken to um, uh, it's a bit of a ride on the tram um, and uh, your entering uh, would, would be like a, a large apartment kind of mm -hmm deal uh, but you're not you know are, aren't taken into the apartment you're sort of taking down a side passage um into like a um a bathing dressing area oh. um of where you are cleaned up and perfumed and given clothes to wear in the, very much in the um sort of white cloth greco roman sort of style with the little kilt showing a lot of leg and that kind of thing mm -hmm. um he's digging and, this and then you are brought out into a large balcony um, where you see one of the queens dressed in a long white gown in the, in the Greco-Roman style, sort of lounging on a daybed. And as you come in, uh, she rises, all nine feet of her, um, and she smiles at you. You certainly are quite the specimen. My queen, you honor me with this invitation. Oh, I intend to do more than that. <laughs> Run. Um, we have unusual physical characteristics. I haven't seen um, one of the candidates come through that sort of matches your physiology. Mm. What would you like can, to know? Can you tell me a little bit about where you come from? And Yes, I'd be happy to. I and my mother are of uh, or, or from the planet Andoria. We have a culture of hmm, pronounced passions, be it social or physical. 
I, um, unlike my mother, more physically resemble my father's race. He is human. And so I lack the antennae that are common to most Andorians. I've seen some of those with the other group, with the, in the same cohort of candidates. Yes, there is one attending uh, Queen, and then he mentions the Queen's name. Uh, I see. Do we know the Queen's names? You don't know any of the Queen's names. Oh, okay, gotcha. Then then, then he'll describe mm-hmm. Lieutenant Zeckelman. Okay. Um, and, and while you are physically interesting, what really caught me is, and it, it's interesting here you speak of passion, the passion with which you deliver that poem during your fight. Are you a poet? I consider myself to be on occasion. However, I think it best to think of myself as a romantic. Really? Yes. One thing we are taught to appreciate on Andori is that life is richer when you appreciate the romance in every moment. And why wouldn't I want to demonstrate my appreciation for the romance of your form? Over towards you with uh, like a searching sort of gaze. My sisters tend to be more focused on the practical side of things. Mm. They don't appreciate the passion and joy that can come from the spoken word or the song or a beautiful piece of music. There are exceptions, of course, but by and large, that's not what interests them. It interests you. It does. Isn't that what we are here for? To connect with others? To help them appreciate the rarely appreciated? To think outside of the context of the culture they've been born into, indoctrinated into? I think poetry can do that. Way to speak to generations unseen. Yes. To allow your voice to carry on through the eons. Indeed. And to allow it to carry truths that are challenging to recognize. She sort of looks over your shoulder and says, oh, you may leave us. And several of the um, other figures that are in the room just turn and depart. Um, I would like to show you something. Um, and then she turns and marches towards the door. You have a short tram ride into this, um, it's almost like a, a, an Acropolis-like building. Ooh. Large One more time pillars, with that word. Big open space. Acropolis, never mind, carry on. <laughs> um, and uh, Into the death city. <laughs> not Necropolis, no, Look, Acropolis. Ash and I have giant women, Drew's got a Necropolis. <laughs> Everyone's got their thing, you know what I mean? That's right. Necrons yeah, come off and flank you, us you. as we descend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, with you, Drew. <laughs> and uh, uh, as she uh, she gets out and like she uh, this is somebody definitely somebody who's used to being in charge. She doesn't pay much attention to you. She just assumes you're going to follow. Mm-hmm. And she takes you inside and you um, enter. It looks could be a, like a temple or a museum. Mm-hmm. There's this large space and there's these hollow sculptures sort of lining both sides of the corridor and there's a, another oh, row wow. down the middle. Um, and uh, you're looking at um, various female forms dressed in the Greco-Roman sort of style. Mm-hmm. Um, they look visibly human, um, but she stops before one and she looks up and she says, this is the Calliope. one of the ancients who uh, 
was the steward of um, of poetry. She's one of the ancients that speaks to me um, in a kindred spirit sort of sense. We've recovered many artifacts and things left behind by the ancients. And my sisters all have their particular focuses. The artwork that the muses inspired resonated with me. I, I love all of the, the muses, but Liopi is my favorite. I can understand why. Um, and sort of there's a little uh, like a semicircular alcove behind and there's um, an odd mix of like scrolls and books, but also like uh, digital devices. Oh, OK. And cool. holographic displays um, with the you know, uh, it looks like this is um, artifacts and relics related to Calliope are all sort of gathered here. Oh. You mentioned music as well, right? Yes. Um, I enjoy she, it. She crosses the hall and says, uh, this is Uchirpe. Um, who was the steward of, of music. And uh, those who used tools to give their voice mm -hmm. meaning. This is my my sisters consider this frivolous, but to me, this is my this is my work. Would you play for me? Um, she smiles in a like in a shocked sort of surprised, but also eager sort of way. I, I would love to. Um, and she takes you up towards the front of the room where there's this large, um, it's like a a harp that's been stretched diagonally. Mm. Um, and she um, sort of casually kneels down into some pillows and sits and uh, takes the instrument and um, starts to play. Um, it's it's a harp, but there seems to be some sort of a technological component to it um, because, like every string she plays, um, produces some resonance and chords and things like that. Um, and uh, she's doing something with a hand that you can't quite enter. like there's controls on the, the neck of the instrument that she's using as well. It seems to adjust the tone and pitch. And she plays a quite beautiful melody. Um, simple on the surface, but there's a lot of complex uh, rhythms um, that uh, play through the song as she um, goes on for a, a couple of minutes. And then she sets it, uh, uh, sets it to rest on her lap. And then uh, before he uh, gives her genuine applause, he asks, is, is clapping the custom here? Clapping with your hands? Yes. Is that a form of appreciation? Indeed. Especially mm. when done thunderously. Question. What happens when we win in the arenas? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, it cheers that's right. And it's uh, all vocal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, cheers and arm waving and stuff like that. Um, by all means, if that's how you show appreciation. Uh, so, so Chichilor does that, and then mm -hmm. he says, "Of course, as you've observed, the other way in which I show appreciation is through verse." And he would like to compose an impromptu poem in appreciation right. of the beauty of her song. Um, just a let you know the impact of what you just said like she carefully sets down the instrument and then like leans forward with her elbows on her knees cross-legged <laughs> leaning into towards you to receive the poem that you're about to give her all right excellent I <laughs> <laughs> all right what do you want from me um pitch me <laughs> hmm let's see oh i know Impressing people. Socially. <laughs> yeah, this seems like he knows 
he now knows what she goes for when mm -hmm. before he had to experiment and now he can use the full force of his presence and his skill and articulation so presence i would suggest command. presence command absolutely and uh considering his goal here is um to establish a certain kind of diplomatic entanglement well i think and and that's all fine um but I, any one of your focuses, unexpected challenges, unorthodox oh. solutions. <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> <laughs> you have it covered three ways, so go ahead. All right, and wonderful. Your focus. Okay, cool. Uh, do we have any momentum left? Um, I have just because I haven't bothered to keep track. That you have two yeah. on the board from last time. We have two. Okay, mm -hmm. then I want to uh, give you one threat and take those two momentum because okay. I think the impact of this particular impromptu poem, having gotten her into a moment where I can express precise appreciation for what she does, did, and values, sure. may carry far. All right. So presence, command, uh, add one threat, spin those two momentum with the focus. Great. I think we'll roll the four. Hmm. Debating using a determination again. Pitch me. Well, I mean, fortune favors the bold, right? Kind of bold to... Well, I don't know how bold it is in this moment, actually. Yeah, there's not much on the line. Yeah. No, let's not worry about it then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. Roll in. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, wait, that was inside command. That wasn't that wasn't presence. Oh, well, yeah. Jeez. Still... Okay. So let's see. Would that be that's a 15. So that would be a success too. Yeah, that zero would be a success because yep. I think the result is 15 and I would have had a 17 total. But I don't mm -hmm. think that affects whether or not the one is a yeah, the one's still an eight. So it wouldn't be a crit. Right. Okay. Excellent. So uh, that's uh, six. six. Six successes. Um, so this was a, this isn't something you're trained for. Um, mm -hmm. It's not something that shows up in your background. You know, like you didn't have a, you know, a poetry stint uh, on a foreign colony or anything like that. That's right. Um, so I, I had the difficulty set at two, but that still oh. leaves you with four successes. You only needed the one over the two. Okay. Um, uh, or pardon me, um, that would give you five extra successes. So you can obtain information or create an advantage or however you want to do with those five or bank them. Yeah. So I think, uh, would it, how much would it cost to create an advantage? Two. Two. Okay. And obtain information. You said I have five total to use? Yes. Okay, great. Then I want to bank two momentum, uh, uh, obtain information with one and mm -hmm. create an advantage with two. Okay. So the, uh, the information I'd like to obtain is... Uh, what well, does she for the, for the success? Let me give you what you got first, and then you sure, can sure, get fair enough. Based Excellent. On that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so your poem definitely like lands; it hits the mark. Um, uh, your improvisation of of um, um, a rhythmic verse is um, tickles all her fancies, um, and she. Uh, Becomes um, I'm out of patience. Effervescent with can't give anymore. Conversation like she's so she feels like she's found um, somebody who understands, um, and she spends a few moments taking you around the gallery here to show you. Um, and some of these names are actually going to be like familiar to you. Oh, okay. Like Calliope is actually, you know, from Earth mythology, was one of the muses, but Cleo was also. One of the muses of history. Mm. Aterpe was uh, um, uh, flutes and music. Thalia was uh, comedy and pastoral poetry. Um, um, Malpamini was the muse of tragedy. These are all figures from Earth mythology. Mm. But she speaks of them as if they were actually here. Yeah. Now, there's a few possibilities there. Like, there's, you know, um, some theories about 
you know, um, parallel development and things like that from cultures, but that the names match exactly yeah. is not what you would expect. You'd expect a different name or a similar functionality with, but the details all seem to match. Um, there's a Tripsicori, um, Erato, a Polyhymnia, oh, yeah. a Urania, the nine muses from um, Greek mythology. They're all there. Um, and you also hear her talk a few times, uh, drop the name of Mother Athena as she's Whoa. explaining this. Yeah. Um, so that's what you have is sort of the background framework that you can use to fill in blanks with questions if you wish. Okay, thank you. That's really helpful about the, mm -hmm. the setting and context. The, the thing he would like to determine mm -hmm. is what thing what's um what would be the most effective thing to get her to trust him because um, it's different than her having ardor for him or interest right no and you, you can get a read like she's not thinking of you in a like in a romantic way at all she sees in okay. you like a, a kindred spirit okay that's that's great that's actually going to work better for what he wants Mm -hmm. because long term he doesn't want to be in a tryst with someone he then has to break up with yeah. right because it's not just because it's inconvenient right that's not what i'm saying it's like he, do he doesn't want to break somebody's heart or do something insensitive to them right mm -hmm. but it, it, but if they are aligned in consciousness and that's that's that is a diplomatic solution that he'd prefer so sure and just to further sketch out the environment that you're in like this building and its contents kind of represent her life's work Ooh. that she has opened up to you and that you have received with pleasure in, in her yeah. perception. Fantastic. Um, so as far as trusting, like that's not, that's not much of an issue. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Um, All right. That's so if there's a, a, and I'll just give you that. So if there's a question you want to ask around that context, go ahead. Yeah, totally then. Uh, so considering that she is receptive to him, mm -hmm. right? What is a, a question he could pose to her that she has not yet considered. How could he approach engaging her in what would likely be continued conversation that she, would... Go ahead. She dropped Mother Athena, and mm -hmm. just for the context of the conversation, the, uh, the muses that she so strongly identifies with were lower in the strata of the ancients. Mm. They're still revered members of the ancients, but they were lower in the strata, which means that there was a strata above them. Ah. Um, and she's name dropped Athena by name. Yeah. So um, something that you might branch into would be asking about the layers above. Cool. All right, excellent. And then the advantage. Hmm. Trying to think, uh, Chichilor is constantly trying to create advantages for others, of course, mm -hmm. as a consequence of his uh, success in diplomacy, right? Like he has some uh, specific talents and stuff for that because he's looking to use his presence to, um, to facilitate everybody else succeeding. So I'm trying to think, um, hmm. That would, would actually be helpful. That would be a bit of a stretch because there's no relationship with anyone else. Yeah. But if you were to pitch it as this is somebody else who really gets this stuff as well, if you wanted to do that, take that angle, that's a possibility. Hmm. But right now, like her, her attention and her goodwill is focused on you. Yeah, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Then, hmm, what do you want? Maybe we just keep the momentum. Or momentum is quite a bit. He's already in a really good interaction with her. Oh. Oh, how about this? Um, we'll see if this makes sense or is even relevant. Okay? Sure. Uh, what his goal is to step back from the character, right? And just be very explicit here. As, as I hinted at before, right? His goal is to get in a situation where he can get one of an additional queen, right? to question the circumstances that she participates in. Now, what you've mentioned about the muses and them being technically a subordinate status in the recognition of all the ancients, right? Mm -hmm. He's definitely gonna to touch on that. 
However, that's strictly within the context of the thing she's interested in. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if there might be a way that because she's receptive and he is, he's clearly demonstrated that he's a kindred spirit in her eyes, that when he asks a question about the ancients, that she'll also be receptive to him asking a question about society in general. Sure. Okay, cool. Great. No problem. You so can make it easy. You can bridge that gap, no problem. All right, excellent. Great. So then uh, he would ask, okay, uh, I'm so grateful you've shown all this to me. And I wonder, how could anyone not appreciate the muses as much as you do? Well, they were important to the ancients, but there were bigger concerns as well. Um, they, they were servants of the uh, servants of members of the council. Um, the muses were? Yeah. Who composed the council? Or who comprised the council is what he, what he asked. Um, well, the council of 14. Um, we have records of them. Um, there was... Um, um, hang on. That's my thought. But there was Athena, Mother Athena. Um... But there was also um, Apollo, Artemis the Preserver, Hephaestus the Builder, um, Hestia the Steward of Home and Hearth. There were 14 that ruled the, the ancients, and they had structures and um, infrastructure underneath them, um, all in in service to um, the overseers of the, of the 14. The overseers? So Apollo was um, the keeper of knowledge um, and art, and some of the muses reported to him, like fell under his purview. Um, um, Athena was the keeper of knowledge um, um, and, uh, and wisdom. So some of the muses reported to her. But the, the 14 divided up the responsibilities of running the ancient society. And they had many servants, hundreds of them, that all worked at various levels. What happened to them? Well, the, they ascended. The ancients did. They did. They conceived of a means to transcend the bonds of a physical reality. That isn't the experience of those of us, of the successful candidates in the trials who ascend. Well, the trials are our attempt to follow in their footsteps. Mm. To help you? Follow in their footsteps. I, I doubt I will ever live to see it. It will be many generations hence. Ah. Um, but each generation comes a little closer. What will happen to you? Well, I will live all my life in service towards that goal. Uh, I will die and pass on. Perhaps if my contributions are of a singular nature, I will be um, incorporated into the next generation. We are each of us rungs on a ladder of improvement. And the goal is to follow in the footsteps of the ancients. He then strokes his chin and says, Occasionally one challenge in following a path laid down before you by others is that you aren't able to take the path that you would have chosen otherwise. Time 
It's like walking into a forest of mystery or... And then he, he realizes, wait a minute, I shouldn't use that metaphor. He says, imagine if you had to spend your whole life only reading the poems that someone gave to you, never composing music of your own, never exploring where a particular instrument that appeals to you would lead you in life, what joy it would bring you, what songs would be strumming in your heart, all for the sake of some goal that they have told you is worth it. Without you knowing for sure that that is the best goal for you. I want the presence and command goal from you to focus apply. This is a big deal role. Okay. Uh, difficulty is set at three. That makes sense. Whew. Okay. I think uh, this is a bold thing to say to her. I was going to say, uh, Captain, Captain, before you say that, have you checked that to see if she's ever written anything? <laughs> <laughs> oh, if she has? Is that what you asked? Oh, yeah. Because if she hasn't, what did you just say about her? Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. Could be risky. All right. Uh, I'm glad I saved that momentum. So I'm going to spend it mm -hmm. here because it's relevant. And um, go ahead. I, I'm just going to say it, your yeah. determination may actually apply here because um, and I can't tell you exactly why, but this is very risky what you're doing. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Whew. All right. Okay. We're going to do it. <laughs> like I said. Termination plus by, by two dice. Yeah. Yeah, I am worried about the um, caretakers overhearing this. Mm. Where I'm thinking. Mm. Yep. Well, we're going to see what happens, because like he says, fortune favors the bold. <laughs> Biggest All right. with like six successes. Let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, it's been a determination. Uh, I think I still have two because I got one back last time from that mm -hmm. um, significant milestone. Uh, of course, we're going to roll that again. But yeah, presence command. Uh, bought two. There's one momentum still on the board. Going to roll it knowing that um, I've applied a determination. So, ooh. And uh, if I spent two to get rid of that complication, that would give me a total of four. And the you said the difficulty was three, right? It could be fun, though. Yeah, yeah it's true. It, it could be quite fun. Just out of character, I'm a little apprehensive. <laughs> and see how Greg described the risk of this. Otherwise, it might I mean, be like, actually, it's not. Because yeah, that's a not really high four. success. Because that's, yeah. that's six. Because you spent yeah, your determination. Yes, exactly. It would be six. I just mean it, it, six with a complication. I was going to it, call six on a complication and then you rolled it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th that's great. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, this, the, the question is, of course, if I um, spin two of those, uh, those momentum to eliminate the complication and then get four. Does it make a better story to have a complication? In this case, yeah, let's leave it to Greg. What do you think? Um, I can't, I can't make that decision one or the other. I'm going to leave it up to you. You don't know what's at risk here, and there's story reasons why I can't tell you. That makes sense. Um, what this interaction is, and, and as you're having this interaction, like, it becomes immediately very clear that this is way weightier than you thought when you started talking. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, that's right. Um, it's like when you're talking to somebody and you're just having a conversation, and you don't realize that like every word you have just said yeah. in the last five years is all hit a button. Oh, gosh. OK, so you're yeah. like five buttons in before you realize, oh, <laughs> shit, what am I dealing with? Is the situation you're in right now? Yeah. OK. All right. Um, I mean, look, uh, Chichalor is here to try and avoid making things worse for the crew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I, I don't think I can, he can afford it. Even though, um, so you what yeah. you buy it off and then have one extra, yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah, seems good. Okay, um, so you make your conversational pitch, and she goes pale.
you created that poem that you... You never heard that poem before? The one you recited to me? And, and he looks confused by that question and then realizes what she's asking and says... And there is a lot of weight behind her question. Yeah, yeah, and he says... Uh, I created it myself, entirely inspired by what I saw in front of me. And then especially the beauty of your music is what spoke to me. And that's what inspired me to compose it on the mom- in the moment. I would not, this is what he says. Yes. Then, then he realizes the, you know, the intensity with which he's asking. And he says, no one else has ever written or heard that poem but you. And I would not have been able to think of it without having first heard the beauty of your music. Um, she looks positively pole-axed. Um, and you can tell just like she's sort of frozen in place that she is processing a lot. Um, and I'm not sure if you have a context for understanding what or why, but like she looks like you've just shattered her reality. Whoa. Well, that's a out of character. That's a more intense outcome than he intended. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted you to question what's going on. Hey, baby, you know, just say, hey, you ask a question here and I think outside the box, not blow up the box. <laughs> and it, and she opens her mouth to say something and then stop and just shakes her head. They inspire. It's in the stories. Oh. What? All the tales, they won't. Nothing, they. And then she seems to remember that you're in the room and she looks at you. This is white. Come with me. Uh, And there's no question mark in that. It's a statement. Mm -hmm. And she grabs you by the hand and you go into um, the, uh, the monorail. Oh, she... You have a fairly, um, long trip. And there's this large edifice that you can see from some distance away. It's all flat, open space around it, paved, but, like, for a hundred yards in any direction around this massive building. Um, and she's walking at her her pace, a quick pace for her, and she's nine feet tall. So you're, you're having to keep like, up. <laughs> oh, yeah. And she's not letting go of your arm, so you're having oh, to drag her to the <laughs> um, And you walk into a large room um, with uh, 14, for lack of a better word, giant thrones. They queen sized or bigger than queen sized? Queen sized. Ooh. But behind each throne um, is a hollow statue. Some oh. are male, some are yeah. female. I just realized, Craig, you said hollow mm-hmm. statue. You mean H O L O. Yeah. <laughs> yes, hollow. <laughs> I have been over here um, trying to figure out how you do a hollow statue. Like for Ralph to get <laughs> shoved like inside a statue. <laughs> How would you know that it isn't filled? Come on, you don't have an x-ray scanner. Yeah, okay. (laughs) All these years, for generations, we've been doing um, it's at this point that you hear something of a commotion. Oh. And you see something that you have not seen before. Um, a vehicle of some sort um, swoops in and 
lands in front of the structure that you are in. Your queen seems oblivious to it. Okay. Uh, several figures um, holding what look like weapons. Yeah. Get out from the vehicle. Um, and they start walking towards where you are. How many, how many generations have we been wrong? She says. And why didn't anyone question it? It's in the stories. And she looks to you like she's trying to find an anchor to hang on to. Oh. She's definitely feeling adrift. Okay. And so, so knowing that, right? Mm -hmm. He says, sometimes you need to, what I was taught is that if you're going to bend the rules, you first must understand them well. So perhaps it took someone of your insight and creativity to get to the point where they could realize that they're just guidelines. Um, give me a presence command roll just to you see how well that lands. Cool. All right. Let's see. We have two momentum left. I will spend one. All righty. Do it. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Out of the park. Um, that seems to give her a stone to cling to in this um, mental tempest that she's find herself caught in. And at that point, these armed figures who um, you've met the servitors, mm -hmm. they look like the servitors. Oh, wow. Um, Do they have like force pikes? Is that they, ha they have some sort of a rod in their hand? OK. They're holding it as if it's some sort of a weapon. It could just right. be a staff of office, maybe. But your all your training yes. and your experience says that's a weapon. Yeah. They're ready to use them. Oh, geez. OK. Um, and I think that is a perfect spot to take our break. Yep. Ooh, baby. Um, thank you for joining us, uh, folks. Twitch guys will be 5, 10, 15 ish minutes um, for uh, YouTube folks will be uh, less than a second if uh, the last one is any measure. So uh, we'll see you in a bit. Bye. Oh, baby. See you soon. Um, welcome back, everybody. Um, so our camera faded out on several armed figures um, jogging, quick jogging uh, towards uh, Captain Chuchalor. By the way, how, about sort of, how many are we talking? Half a dozen. Oh, you got so that's happening in the that's background. The like fuzz. You're looking at the queen, facing the queen, and sort of behind her, you see these figures quickly approaching. So you're trying to finish off your conversation and plan to see before it gets disrupted by whatever is about to happen. And that's when the camera cuts. You um, won't take it over my <laughs> dead body. They're like, we're, we're here, here for, for you, you Captain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Crap. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the scene picks up with uh, Commander Kitnell, um, who has taken a bit of a ride to a somewhat secluded structure um, within the city. Um, sort of has a vibe to it of like a Greek fortress sort of has the the feel to it as you're approaching. Not complete with towers and gates and things like that. Um, um, but this is, by all accounts from the research that you have done, this would be the detention area where there are um, some hundred or so um, figures here that are considered too unruly to be out amongst the regular population. Mm. And so you, you come up to the door, um, large sort of imposing thing, and the door just sort of opens as you approach. Ooh. Cool. Any visible guards or anything like that? No. Automated detention center seems on par for the stuff we've heard about anyways, so cool. Could be. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kit Neal's primary uh, goal right now is first to see if anybody else has been cleansed, for lack of a better term, of uh, the brain whammy, mind whammy, um, and see if people are, you know, shouting about they don't belong here or anything like that, um, because that's his primary focus, to see if there's anybody else like that um, before figuring out what other people might be all 
non-conforming about. All right. So you walk in through the door. Um, and it's just an empty corridor. Left and right, there's an office. Um, looks like an office or a reception area. Off to one side, but there's no one there. Um, the lights are a little bit dim. Um, well, that, it looks fairly empty where you are. Um, and then you hear some footsteps coming. And glancing in the direction, you see way down the end of the corridor, somebody moving fairly quickly, like a fast walk towards you, like like somebody was... Got away visitors from their they desk? Weren't expecting. Well, like, like somebody got visitors they weren't expecting. Um, and you see what looks like Sir Richard 251 sure. runs up to you. Um, and she's, oh, hello. Um, I wasn't aware we were having any visitors today. I'm just dropping in. Um, and you are Servitor... Oh, I, I'm Servitor 248. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm... I'm curious about who all has been incarcerated here and what their reform is like. Oh, um... Well, and, um, but I can certainly show you um, the process. Oh, please, there's a process. I'd love to see that. Um, and uh, she takes you on a bit of a tour. Just to give me a um, presence command roll. See what kind of a vibe you're getting. She's getting from you. Cool. Uh, uh, but you're you're leaning into apparently leaning into her programming, so she's. Prepared to expound on cool. if you're asking questions, you answer. But this cut okay. ever under diplomacy or cultural studies? Um, as my focus? Diplomacy would work, sure. Okay. Two. Um, that's good. We'll bank one of those if you want, unless you want to obtain information. Um, well, let me find out what we get first, and then sure. Um, she is very willing to show you around. She doesn't appear too concerned. There's areas where you're um, not permitted to go, but she'll take you on a full tour of the facility. Um, and she talks about the the process. So, um, so some candidates, when they arrive um, based on their studies and past experience, um, have instinctual level drives and urges um, that make them um, poor candidates for um, to be allowed um, free access to the um, to the other members of society. Uh, some have inherent competitive edges. Um, some have an ingrained need to uh, prove dominance. Um, so that that makes them poor candidates for being out in public. Um, and so they end up here. Okay, I see. Um, and, and you said there's a process. Or are they being given reform, or are they merely just held, imprisoned? Well, generally, depending on the specific circumstances, they're generally uh, given three opportunities at indoctrination. Um, if they are not able to um, assimilate themselves into society after the third, they end up here and are, um, for lack of a better term, warehoused. Indoctrination, you said. Right. Um, new um, new arrivals um, as candidates um, need to be prepared for their role in society. Um, the vast majority of candidates, uh, that doesn't pose a problem. Um, we give them the information and tools that they need uh, through the indoctrination process. Um, but sometimes there's um, instinctive drives or things like that that... Um, alter their role in society or their perceived role in society. Let's see. So are there any here who are who believe that they're in the wrong place? Um, and of course, Nurjad is trying to dance around the idea of, you know, people who, you know, because we arrived, air quotes, ready to serve. Um, so are there any who have you know, express like, like this isn't where they belong. They belong somewhere else or something like that. 
Um, I'm not sure I understand the nature of your question, but I'll you know, give it a try. Um, they understand what their expected role is in society um, for the most part, but they, um, uh, in some cases, uh, for example, there's one species here that has uh, an instinctive drive to um, ensure dominance. So their leaders have to be the dominant ones. So if they have a new leader, the first thing they want to do is prove that they're dominant or get, or that the leader is the, the stronger one. So, I mean, those aren't those folks. However, they comport themselves um, wherever they came from. That's not really appropriate behavior with the queens. I see. We, we don't want some new arrival, you know, taking a swing at a queen, for example. That would be inappropriate. But they may make good sparring partners. We have um, in the past um, given that a try, uh, but they, um, the folks that fall into those categories often have a difficulty restraining themselves in combat situations, which leads to unnecessary injuries and uh, things like that. Hmm. So um, over the years, we have learned um, from, in some cases, trial and error that the um, while it might seem like a good idea on the surface, it it's not worth the effort and um, the losses that we sustain in trying to do that. Hmm, I see. So you would deny me this training opportunity. You've seen how Irilor wins in the arena. I must best him. <laughs> yeah. um, give me a presence command roll. Sure. I'm gonna spend that momentum that I had previously. Sure. And bump that up to three. Um, well done. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, she gets a little bit flustered, like you've definitely taken her off her script. Well, we, we certainly want all of our candidates to be um, at, at their best when they go through the trials. Well, we're not supposed to allow mingling. Um, and she's kind of stuck. Like she wants to be helpful. She's like, you see a desire to be helpful, but what you're asking for is something she's been told can't happen. Sure. So she's kind of trapped in a loop there. Oh, and if, if you have issues with this, uh, that's fine. And uh, at least um, let me meet them i you know we'll, we'll stay safely separated and uh i can bring this up with 251 and 264 and see if they would agree that it is a worthwhile risk knowing my own capabilities in the arena if there may be an exception to a rule okay i, I um yeah you can meet one if you wish, wish to um assess I suppose that would be okay. Um, and um, she seems a little uncertain, and but takes you um, into the interior of the facility. Um, and you're passing by, there's like large open yards. Um, you see, uh, um, you pass through, and you're just sort of looking through view screens and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, into like, a, there's a large dining area um, where prisoners are getting meals and things like that. It appears to be fairly, uncontrolled like it's not like they have to pass through security checkpoints to get from a to b or that kind of thing but you do see out in the yard um a couple of prisoners appear to be starting a fight and then almost immediately there's this energy bubble sort of winks into existence around them and forces them apart and they can't like they can't connect to each other and they're kind of suspended in mm -hmm. the bubble um and that stops until they sort of settle down and then the bubbles dissipate <laughs> um, so your cat's back. Mid time out. Yeah. Um, and uh, she goes into um, a smaller office and um, activates a panel. And it, it didn't look like there was a panel until she touched the wall, and then this display sort of lit up. Um, and she uh, enters some commands, and uh, just, uh, we'll have a suitable candidate here shortly. Oh. Oh. Okay. And Kitty will just kind of immediately parade rest just like cool mm -hmm. 
Um, mm-hmm. And a door opens up, and you see, um, and you'd be fairly familiar with this, a Gnosticum. Large, burly fellow, um, spiky sort of face, mouth part bits. Right. Um, yeah. And he kind of ducks his head as he comes in. I'm trying to find a good reporting. image to drop in the chat. Um, it says reporting to um, the servitor you've been dealing with, but it does not take its eyes off of you. Or he does not take his eyes off of you. Um, and the servitor's kind of like. Uh, <laughs> and doesn't really know what to say or do at this point. It's okay. And like nods to the Nausicaan and mm-hmm. um, we were just talking about this. I don't know that this is necessarily a focus, um, but I am curious if I can pull on some some trill background here um, and know if I at least speak Nausicaan. Sure. Um, uh, I will allow that as uh, um, a use of your um, um, trill ability. Cool. Yeah, um, because I do. Ha- I have the focus for cultural studies, but specifically, I want that language. That way, I can speak on their level, um, sure. and just like in in their home tongue, which I might kind of be butchering a little bit, but because um, I'm not sure with the mouth that they've got on that they make the same sounds we do. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's just a. Are you? Mm-hmm. Because the servitor's probably well, ask it. Servitor doesn't know <laughs> what they're going to do, anyways. Um, you know, are you? Mm, I guess he's going to use the word uh, content to stay here. Seems surprised on a few levels. You can give me an insight command or in, inside security role to see if you can get a read on it okay um would my cultural studies apply yes okay yeah i will take those two um so it's clear that this uh a fellow understands what you're saying but is surprised that he understands it that's fine <laughs> um and like, I, I don't think Kid Neil can help it. He gives the guy a wink. It's like, maybe maybe you know what this symbol, uh, this body language means. <laughs> um, and says, are you familiar with Starfleet? Again, in Nausicaan. Um, no. <laughs> to both questions. My crew and I seek to escape this place. When we have, hmm, I, I think that, that's the first line that comes out. And then there's the quick hedge of after Ascension has been determined. <laughs> You're like, we're totally on board, guys. Don't worry about yeah. it. We're just going to leave afterwards. Um, and he says you are the strongest of your crew (laughs) (laughs) the young nerd (laughs) (laughs) I am one of the strongest Um, yeah actually yeah I I am I I think Kid Neal is pretty straightforward if I am the first officer and using a cultural equivalent term, right? Like I'm mm-hmm. second in command. She will listen to you. Just a nod. Tell her to turn off the safeties. I beat up a Klingon, we'll add Nausicaan to the list. Um, knocks to the <laughs> servitor and says, you disable the safeties just for you know a minute if, if, if you think things get out of hand you know yeah. turn the back on yeah. and this 100 <laughs> percent like come on buddy just just a minute just turn the other way um and she's uh, I, I, I don't uh, um 
You've got a couple of big successes against her already, so... Okay... But she's worried she's going to get in trouble. Um, but she goes to the panel and um, enters some commands again. And before her hand is even back to her side, this Nausicaan has launched himself at you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, give These you... are the folks that are from the Valley of the Wind, right? Right. <laughs> right. Exact same no. folks. Uh, yeah. yeah. He comes... He launches himself at you on a giant wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucked. Um, <laughs> Not goes bugs. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. Uh, he doesn't have any particular reason or any particular talent to um, get um, seize the initiative, so you can go first if you wish. Cool. Uh, um, it's going to be a melee combat unarmed. Mm-hmm. Daring and security, right? Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and sprint my determination of speak softly, carry a big stick. Uh, Ooh, yeah. That's sure. exactly what you just did. <laughs> or exactly what this Nausicaan is going to recognize. Um, during security, still two. Actually, do we have momentum? Because I might take a die. Yeah, we have one. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there was one left over after the ear lore stuff, so. Okay. So, spend momentum, determination, um, and hopefully end this before it really starts. Hell yeah, do it. Yes. Um, quite solidly, he gets uh, one success, so you completely overpower him. Ooh, baby. Uh, he comes in and takes like a really ham-handed swing at you that you just sort of Lean back a little bit. Yeah, I, and, and I've, do I've the been double-fisted. I've been doing <laughs> yeah. a lot of hand-to-hand training recently. <laughs> <laughs> um, do the quick double-fisted uh, smack to the side of the head. Um, yeah. <laughs> he goes down on one knee, and then you just bring an elbow down on him, and he's um, definitely beat. Um, go ahead and roll only your unarmed attack damage. I two more six. Oh yeah. Seven. Um. Yeah, he hasn't been working out a lot lately. (laughs) Okay, um, that's enough. Uh, He he sort of smiles like he's enjoyed it, but he holds up a hand. Sure. And Uh, Nerdjod doesn't even pause, grabs the hand, and pulls him Mm -hmm. right back up. All right. Um, I will follow you if you wish me. I'll be back. Stay fresh. Uh, um, he does add, however, mm-hmm. do not choose weak enemies. No. <laughs> and like slaps him, slaps him on the shoulder and like gives a look of like, no, I wouldn't pick weak enemies. I picked you, um, you know, kind of thing. And then like makes it a, a, like the shift from the conversational stuff to looking at the servitor and says, you can reengage the safeties. Um, and then it, it takes her a moment to process. Oh, oh, and, and reengages. Um, she was kind of watching with a horrified but interested look on her face, and sort of boring between the two. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Um, the the Noskin uh, standing in front of you uh, says that I lead twelve. Will all twelve follow and come with us? Um, he sort of. His reaction is sort of a, I'm not even going to justify that with a response. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> um, he says, my name is Hooja. Hooja, I will be seeing you again soon uh, in Nausicaan. Um And then to the servitor says, could you potentially write a report if it doesn't get you in trouble so that I can take it to 251 and uh, the other number <laughs> escapes me. Um, that way I can um, show them that uh, Huja will not be a threat but a good sparring partner for myself. Um, she doesn't appear to have a context to process that and like she knows that she should say say no 
but she doesn't have a context to justify saying no. So after a moment, she says, oh, okay. Thank you. And like, Kid Neil's out of here. It's like, okay, <laughs> okay. I, I found some rogue, rogue cannons that he will feel very, very bad about leaving behind if necessary. <laughs> If necessary. Uh, uh, Noskins on the crew would be an interesting interspecies relationship. Especially challenge. because we are still kind of on a long-term journey. Mm-hmm. Um, and we might have to leave them somewhere uh, safe and comfortable, but yeah. Okay. Um, so camera fades and then opens up on um, uh, Rilla. Um, you are going through normal duties because you haven't been told otherwise. Um, and you are in the, um, the gladiatorial barracks, um, just sorting through the latest results. Um, when your queen enters, uh, not a common sight. Um, it's not, it's not like it's unheard of, but it's not like every day you see a queen down in the gladiatorial barracks. So she kind of looks around the room and her eyes spot you and she heads over towards you. Good morning, it my is, queen. Um, she gives you a nod. Um, it is done. You have been reinstated. Uh, these will be your quarters for the next two weeks. I will do my best to fight. For your honor. Um, she seems pleased at that, but says you fight for your own honor. Um, you'll be in the schedule starting tomorrow. Thank you. And it seems like she wants to say something else, but turns and heads towards the door. Um, the other gladiator sort of start like the relationship has suddenly changed you're no longer the overseer of the gladiators you're one of them now so the, you see a lot of gladiators just kind of out of the corner of her eyes sort of taking your measure they've heard mm-hmm. about you but none of them have ever fought you before you don't know what happened before um but whatever it was you were elevated fairly quickly um but now that you're back in the gladiatorial pits there's a few folks kind of sizing you up um, for Commander Kitnil and um, Captain Tuchelor, you now have a third person in your scheme to manipulate the standings um, if you wish to have that go on. Or you can just do your own thing. Are you going to engage in their scheme or do you want to do you want to win? I mean, I'll, do both. Like, I'll join their scheme if they would like. Otherwise, I'm just going to try to win. Okay. Um, fair enough. Um, and to just do like a smash cut of a couple of different boats and stuff. Um, just uh, give me a daring and uh, security roll just to see how you do in general. Can I apply a infiltration focus? Uh, not really. This is straight up combat on the arena. Okay. Sort of the Blood Sands from Final Fantasy XIV kind of deal. Mm. Okay, uh, fair enough. So holding your own, um, you quickly sort of establish that you do actually have Not a what place you're doing. to stand here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and that sort of calms the other gladiators down. They're less li- like looking to prove themselves. Like, you know, what is she's an overseer? What the hell does she know about fighting? I mean, it's obviously clear that you do. So you get sort of get enfolded into the community. Um, which is sort of half friendly, half rivalry. Some gladiators are kind of weird that way. Right? I like you, but I'm going to kick your ass. Sort of. Uh, yeah. Food. Ideal friendship you've just described. <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of right up your alley, right? So it's mm-hmm. sort of a big adventure scientist. Um, and we'll uh, cut over to um, Dr. Hudson. Um, you are being briefed and. Uh, run through what your new duties are going to be. Um, it's a lot of prep work that you're getting engaged in right now. Uh, preparing samples. They actually have like a um, 
and it's hard to wrap your head around it, like a DNA printer, like a 3D printer that actually just produces DNA on demand. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around how that would even work <laughs> in a reliable way. Um, but apparently they have one um, and they're getting, um, getting it ready because when the trials are over the next couple of weeks, they're going to be very busy doing the next generation of prints. Um, I don't know if we talked about it last time, there's a series of um, incubators. Um, there are precisely 14 of them um, in the next room. So every generation of queens is 14 in number. Um, and uh, during the course of the, the training and the like, you're doing your intro stuff, right? Your orientation, your employer orientation um, with the servitors. Um, they say that they look to build certain traits in um, each specific queen um, and they uh, appear to align to certain roles um, so there is one that um, is um, uh, specialized in like uh, farming and agriculture and food production there's one that's sort of specialized in um, in knowledge and intelligence and scientific study um, and that kind of thing and they also the 14 queens have certain profiles that they're looking to fill while still improving the overall generation entirely. Um, and they're kind of in a holding pattern until they get the traits that they're supposed to capture. Um, and your understanding is that the caretaker provides like a an order list, right? produce these queens. Um, and then they do the manipulations and stuff like that to produce the desired result. Um, they're very forthcoming with information, so if there's questions you want to ask, um, they are more than happy to fill in the blanks. It seems to be part of their core programming is, uh, is education and science and discovery and that kind of thing. So they're, right. yeah, they're, they don't disseminate or lie as far as you can tell. They're very honest and open and will answer questions truthfully, unless they, for some reason, can't. And you have occasionally encountered um, where that I'm, I'm not able to discuss that. Right. Uh, but it's, it seems to be very narrow subjects that they can't talk about. Um, so if you have any questions for them or anything like that that you want to investigate further during your orientation or about the lab or the process um so hmm. No, I think I, I genuinely do think he's kind of just going along with it, like finding out what what is going on is going to take time. He's not really looking to cause trouble and and things like that. He's definitely not as bold as the captain in mm -hmm. that way. Um, so I, I think he's generally just going going with the flow of as far as duties he gets assigned and learning to do them. And I think he's a, a quick study at basically all of this as soon as he you know has time to understand the the concepts a little bit um some of, and, those, some of those jumps you know mm -hmm. and using the tools is is one thing but understanding how they work is the is the kind of mind-boggling right. like, i understand what this does but how does it do it like you, right how do you print dna that, right. like the, that's sort of mind-boggling and i um, think that's that's where a lot of his focus is going of figuring it out more than paying attention to um, the specifics of what they're asking. Like, like sort of doing what they ask by by rote or whatever, while trying to like be in his own head of like, how mm -hmm. does this possibly work? How can I, you know, improve our technology through these discoveries and stuff like that? All right, and um, can I get a reason medicine or reason science, your choice? Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Not a one. Okay. Um, so during that, um, with reason medicine. So during that course of um, the orientation and training, and this would take place over a couple of days. Um, it becomes pretty clear that uh, they know a lot about how to use the various tools, but they don't necessarily know how those tools actually work. Right. So um, they would be the equivalent of technicians. Right. Not um, operating equipment. They're not designers. They haven't built any of this stuff. Right. This is stuff that 
they know how to maintain and repair and stuff like right. that, but they don't understand the, the core mechanisms behind it all. Um, and I th think that's about it. Unless there was something you wanted to delve into as part of that. Not in particular. It's just okay. if there's any sort of particularly... I mean, I can make rolls for it or whatever, but particularly juicy sort of secrets or mission critical things that come up in the course of him doing these tasks. Um, I will say they do talk about the the genetic sample that's like the baseline mm -hmm. that they've been working from. Um, and uh, they use a name. The, um, the, the genetic sample is um, Mother Athena. Mm. Um, so that would be something you become aware of just during the course of the conversation. Um, there's a lot of talk uh, about the caretaker, and the caretaker is the one that places the orders, um, assesses which qualities they want to um, adjust on each generation of queens, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then they're just basically you know short order cooked at that point, uh, right. producing whatever order the caretaker mm -hmm. put before them. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't seem to understand the how those selections are made or what right. drives those selections. They just get a list of required traits and and execute it basically. Um, so they're very knowledgeable about how to do the things that they need to do, but they don't necessarily understand the whys or the, the underlying processes mm -hmm. to, to make it happen. Um, so let's cut back to the temple. Uh, what is the captain going to do as these folks are coming in? Well, I was joking about this, but of course he would stand in the way of the queen, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's trying to strike a valiant figure so all right so as you move um she suddenly becomes aware of them mm -hmm. um and she looks a little confused She's, what are all of you doing here um and the um the figures one of them steps forward and says um my queen there is some difficulties and we need to uh, correct them and she says what what are you talking about minor difficulties um, please, if you would just report to the medical center, um, we can explain it all there. Uh, and she sort of looks at you and looks at the figures around the room. Earlar squeezes her hand in reassurance. And reaches up and gives her hand. <laughs> um, and she says, no, I'm in the middle of discovering some things here. I can't be disturbed. Um, and at that point, the figure that, and you, just from your tactical awareness, um, the figure that has been doing the speaking has like clearly a bit flips and they've reached a decision. Oh. Oh, and, yeah. And without a command being issued or anything, all of them yeah. brandish the sticks that they're holding. All right. Um, so what are you going to do? It is on Time for me to brandish me fists. OK, so you're going to rush forward and try fisticuffs. Yes, absolutely. All it's right. time for it. Um, you There's are, nothing better than action. You are melee against range, so they will go. Oh, there's a guns. OK, I gotcha. was going to say. Mm -hmm. Oh, then uh, let's see. Hmm. I wanted to confirm that first. All right. Okay. So they got their guns are going to shoot at me with. It appears that, yeah, they level them to point. Point, and they're pointing at at Irelor. They're not pointing at the queen, right? They're pointing at the queen. Oh, they're pointing at the queen. Oh, yeah. The okay, I'm yeah. Asking questions. Yeah, then uh, uh, uh they faulty. not doing it. Yep. <laughs> now, now I'm just imagining you all have seen that statue with like the guy throwing off the the babies and the kids yeah. off it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are, are there any solid objects around that might amplify the strength of my my strikes? The force of my strikes? Can I, mean? I find a stick? I need a um, stick. If not, Irelor is just going to start punching. Um, just to, for uh, shits and giggles, why don't you give me a uh, daring security roll to see if you can find something as an improvised weapon real quick. You got it. Oh, yeah. This seems like he needs to apply an unorthodox solution. Sure. Risky <laughs> <maneuver>. <laughs> All right, finding this. So 
Make a task roll, daring security. Okay, so I will say that there's an incense burner um, not far away. One of the yes. low, like, sort of the big barrel sort of kind. Uh -huh. Not huge, but like a like a gallon pail sort of incense burner on the ground and nearby your feet. So it would be easy enough for you to hook it with a foot and kick it at somebody. Oh, yeah, I definitely would like to do that then. Okay. Um, yeah. Screen. Yes, exactly. So they will still shoot f Hmm, no, because it's an unorth... I'll let you go first. Go ahead. All right, cool. Right. Uh, am I making a daring security roll for this? I would call it a daring security. Sure, sort of a ranged melee attack. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Definitely going to spend one threat to make it three so that I sure. can re-roll if necessary. Yeah, re-roll that one. Mm -hmm. All right, roll one. The one or the zero? Oh, the zero. Sorry, re-roll that zero. That's what I meant to say. So four total. Uh, okay, um, I don't think they're gonna beat it. But let me try and check it out. Here. Do it. Try it. Fortunately, they all How have many? the same stats. Half dozen, you said, right? Half dozen. All right, Captain's got that. Ooh. Ooh. Um, you succeed by one. So yeah. yeah, go ahead and roll your effect dice. All right. Uh, would I be rolling just unarmed strike damage? Yeah. Okay. That works for me. And if I remember correctly, they automatically add in the total when you roll the, mm -hmm. the challenge dice for the... Okay, yeah, cool, down, yeah, down yeah, at the exactly. bottom with weapon, yeah. It adds yeah, your yeah. security. Excellent. Cool. Ooh, that's good. Three, four, five, six, and three effects. Uh, yeah. Do you have any effects for your own search? Um, knockdown, non-lethal. Um, uh, if he had his Ushan Tor, then uh, we'd be, it'd be vicious. Sure. Um, Do you not have the mean right hook? Nah, not because I took it on tour, right? Like I could have swapped. I could have got that instead, uh, instead of increasing daring by one. But yeah, I, I, there weren't any talents I thought to get rid of instead of mean right hook. So, all right. Um, so the um, the incense burner goes sailing through the air, sort of dumping its contents, ashes and stuff like that, as it does mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. causing a large cloud of dust to sort of fill the air and smacks the servitor directly into the forehead. Oh, sweet. Um, uh, and he just clumps, clumps to the ground, like teeters over like a tree. Um, the other folks uh, are surprised by this maneuver. Like they're not, they're not, they weren't expecting resistance. Um, so they kind of uh, dodge out of the way of the dust and um, it's you and the queen now. Um, and she's like um, horrified that they were going to shoot her. Yeah. And also kind of out of her element. Oh. Uh, yeah. She doesn't engage in combat. Yeah, this isn't the war queen. <laughs> this isn't yeah, Queen this Ares. Is, <laughs> this is the art queen. <laughs> um, so she she's like she appears to be standing there frozen in, in like indecision. Can I say something? You may say something or do something as you All like. right, so he's going to try and exhort her to do something. Mm -hmm. um, oh, let's see. Um, what would he say? He would say... Um, oh, yeah. Okay. So he would say... He doesn't know her name yet. He still hasn't told her name. <laughs> so he says... Who do they have them? Yeah, fair enough. He says... My queen, Athena was mighty in both words and arms. Strike them thusly. Um, go ahead and give me a um, presence command roll. All right, all right. See if we can get this non-combat queen to engage. Cool. Oh, did I get a momentum from the last time? Yeah. Okay, cool. Then I will spend that momentum. Sure. Presence command. Let's see this. Come on. Act boldly. Yes. Um, okay. You do exhort her forward. Um, and she grabs. Um, um, it's. Uh, Any momentum from that? Yeah, you can um, take a couple momentum. Cool. Done. Um, or you can give them to her. Oh, yeah, definitely to her. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, sweet. Could I apply one of my talents here? That might awesome. be relevant. Sure. Yes. Okay, cool. Let me uh, look it up. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. So he has 
advisor and plan of action. So whenever you assist another character using your command discipline, the character being assisted may reroll 1d20. And then uh, his plan of action. When an ally succeeds at a task that was made possible, it had reduced difficulty because of an advantage created by the character. That advantage represented a plan or a strategy. Mm-hmm. Maybe not that. But um, I bet advisor would apply here. Sure. Cool. So she'll have three rolls then. Uh, so she'll re-roll anything? Okay. Yeah, she re-rolls 1d20. Um, 10 and 11. Both of those are successes. Okay. Um, so these queens have all been like reserved and dignified. Um, they are imposing just from their size and some of them from their outfits and stuff. They have sort of an intimidating kind of presence. Uh, this mm-hmm. one was definitely the, on the softer end of that scale. Um, but still, to see a nine foot tall woman um, reach over and grab, they have these large oil burners that they use uh, as lamps. Um, not because they need them just for the aesthetic that they're mm-hmm. of trying. Of course, yeah. And she grabs this thing with both hands, and it's huge. Like, it's like oh. a light standard, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you hear the wind whistle as she swings. Yes. And um, just uh, takes out three of these guys just from the blow. They go flying backwards towards the car um, yeah. and land on the ground. You see one of them starts to spark a little bit. Um, so they're definitely not getting back up. And you knew these are androids, and so they're not that durable, apparently. Uh, so now there's... Um, Two of them are down, but still in the fight, and there's a three up. Uh, and they're going to fire. Of course they are. Um, these guys are not built for combat, however. <laughs> Point of order, should that be four of them that are down? Cause... Oh, yes, right. Four. So there's two left. Thank you, Drew. Mm-hmm. Uh, gotcha, Captain. <laughs> yeah. Looking out for me. Right. <laughs> oh. Um, I'm trying to remember because my mind is suddenly blank. I think they hit. There's no dodging. I think, I th- yeah, I don't think, I think there's not. There's no dodging. There's just cover, and uh, the target is one, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, oh, we yeah. ran into this before. What was it? Yeah. Oh, um, did Dark you mode. type in three and then not click out first? Oh, Wasn't yeah. That the thing? Right. So, like, if you just, yeah. There we go. Yep. Okay. Um, so, the queen is the target because she is the biggest threat, literally. Mm. Um, two effects each. Okay. So, bolts fire from. And it's just a little like a beam of light. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, and they strike the queen. There's no blow. There's no like. It's not like a phaser hitting or anything like that. There's no splash of energy. Um, uh, but she definitely slows down, and you see her sort of take a bit of a stagger. Um, she's still up, but she's definitely um, being affected by these beams. Oh no! And then we're back to Captain Tuchelor. Ooh, geez. Okay. Uh... He's going to keep up the pummeling. Go for it. Yeah. Um, hmm. What would be required to punch one into the other? Um, I think that would be a two momentum create advantage. Okay. Gotcha. So if, oh, you, cause you can do extra attacks or extra damage. If you succeed, is that, isn't that right? Is that a way to spin momentum? That is a way to spin momentum. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So if, then, you, uh, if you beat your target by two, you can use that to heave one into the other. All right, sweet. Okay. We're going to try it then. Sure. Uh, here we go. We got daring security. We got two momentum on the board. Oh, no, I gave it to her. So uh, we're going to spend another threat. Okay. You know how he likes to keep things dangerous. Yeah, we sort of do. And boop. yes. Okay, uh, that works. So you kind of rush forward and grab uh, this one uh, by the lapel and oh, that sounds good. And yeah. the belt loops. <laughs> yeah. 
and uh, heave him up over your head. He's surprisingly light. <laughs> he, he's not like a whole, you know, biological person. Yeah. And you just shove him into the the other guy, and they both go down. All right. So for the moment, they're, they're still in the fight, but for the moment, the two of you are clear. Yeah. You can try to push your advantage. I'm not sure what your end game is with that, or you can try and escape. Um, I think we want to escape. However, Chichalor um, also believes that these guys are going to come after us. Mm -hmm. So if we're in a position where we can disable all of them and then leave, he would he would prefer that. So if they're on the ground, right? Mm -hmm. If one of them has a has a gun that's available. Absolutely. He'd want to pick that up and he'd want to toss one to the queen. Okay. Um, easy enough to arm yourselves with ranged weapons. They're effectively mm -hmm. a phaser three, but they're non-lethal. Okay, cool. Okay. Awesome. Great. Um, so you can start using your phaser three stats. Okay. Um, do you mean a phaser with three damage? A phaser type two? Or, or? Pardon me, a phaser, a phaser type two. Okay, okay cool. Great. It's, All right. Type so, three is the rifles, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's, 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 I just want to make sure. Squirrel in traffic. Squirrel in traffic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no worries. All right. Uh, then uh, I want to shoot one. Okay. And I'm assuming that's still control security, right? Yep. Okay. For range weapons, control security. Excellent. Then here we go. Um, is this still count as an unexpected challenge? Um. If not, then I'm not going to have a focus that supplies. So. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, that's no worries. Just figure that out. So we're rolling. All right, two hits. Um, one momentum. Yep, and um, I will leave it available for her. Okay. And go ahead and roll your effect dice. You got it. Do, do, do. It should be perfect. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that hurts a lot. Oh, um, damn. So that android completely shuts down. All right, excellent. Um, that. I think only leaves three if I'm doing my math right. Yeah, knocked. Uh, I, I'm assuming that knocking them down wasn't the same thing as disabling them. That's right. correct. Um, so I, I, I knocked one down with a punch. Uh, she knocked three down with a hit from a sensor. And, and took then, one of them out. Okay, and took one of them out. So then um, I just shot one. So I think there are three who are still um, not disabled, but all of them are on the ground. Okay. Right. Um, a shot goes wide. Did she spend and, the momentum for a third die? No, this is what the services you alternate generally unless you have a talent. Oh, cool. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I misunderstood. Great. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, she hits. Um, what's the effect this for your phaser? What are you using for your phaser? Three. It's three, three plus dice. security. Yep, three plus security. Um, so... At a panic attack, seeing two and five, and going, oh no! Oh wait, no, we're playing oh, Star yeah. Trek. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Um, trying to remember. It's uh, isn't it one and two are zero? Yeah. Three, Three and four, and four are, are, are are one. And five and six are effects. Yeah. So then what's one, two? Oh, two five, five, I think five and six is two. Let's see, hold on. Can I see your ball? No, it's not there. Let me look. Challenge dies. Real quick. Challenge dies. Challenge dies. Yeah, cool. Challenge dies result. Uh, wh one, two, or one and a two. Three and four is zero. Okay. Five and six is a one plus effect. All right. Um, so a two so is a two. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so one effect um, and uh, zeros. Yeah. Um. So she uh, tags one. Um, yeah, uh, she tags one. It takes some damage, non-lethal damage, uh, but it's so much in the fight. Uh, okay. Then Makes it's their turn. I am. I didn't realize I was so rusty on the combat side. Sorry, guys. No worries. I mean, so are we. Yeah, so <laughs> say, when, when did no. we practice? In like a year. <laughs> um, and, and so she does it all, eh? Um, okay, so complication. Forgot to charge uh, your android. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the first android misses. Um, the second one misses uh, poorly um, and manages to um, uh, disable their weapon. So they are effectively unarmed now. They'll have to rearm themselves. Excellent. Okay. Um, and it's the queen's turn. No, we did the queen already. So it's back to Captain Chuchula. 
Get shot. So you guys continue to move away. Um, they're sort of giving chase, but not as like they're you're definitely like they weren't expecting a fight. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So uh, not only are you kicking their ass, you're also fleeing, and like none of this is making sense to them. <laughs> so they're kind of half-assed following you, but they're not. You're, it's easy enough for you guys to extend and escape at this point if you wish, unless you okay. want to finish off the last two guys that are chasing them. I think finishing them off will help because then we don't have any known pursuers. Sure, go ahead. That's a good hit with a momentum. Yep. We're at two total considering she hasn't used the one I left available to her. Oh, right. Yeah. No worries. Oh, I got a little challenge dice. Roll Mm -hmm. it. Two, four. Yeah, that's enough to take that one out. All right. Excellent. She'll use that extra momentum. Sweet. Oh, uh, ooh. Ooh. Two successes and a complication. Mm. I will take that complication as my, as a threat. Cool. Sounds good. Craig, I need you to spend some of this threat at some point because it's starting <laughs> terrifying me. I have a plan for it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, c- can you confirm something out of character? We we found out where our stuff is, right? Mm-mm. Oh, okay. No. All right. Um, one or two, three and four is zero. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's enough to take out the last one. You guys are free and clear. Um, as the last one goes down, she just kind of like she's. I did some things. Why did I do those things? Why did they attack me? What happens now? You tell me your name so I can thank you for fighting by my side. I'm looking. Uh, I am Ionis. Thank you, Ionis. Could have been Sappho. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> why Why did the servitors attack? Because you started asking questions. And he's going to go with this, right? Even though he doesn't know for sure exactly, mm-hmm. right? But um, the the context for this kind of thing and, you know, his suspicion of, like, the whoever's overseeing this, right? He says, when there's um some consistent regime and people decide that they want to do something different, there's always restraint the caretaker means to stop you from asking the right questions you take yourself who else who else would have sent them they don't report to queens right um give me a presence command all right got it about to start a revolution among the queens oh, yeah Mm-hmm. Think any of my focuses would apply? Uh, diplomacy. Look at that cat. All right, sweet. Cool. Got peaks. Well, peaks what'd you say? Camera. What's that, Chris? It's it's just like, look at this camera. cat. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> very pleased. <laughs> All right, Um, I think we have one momentum left. I'm going to use it because yep. I'm still trying to get her to continue participating in this charade. Okay. Any momentum? Um, yeah, you can take two momentum. Cool. Um, or you can use that momentum to um, obtain information. Hmm. Or you can give me two of those momentum to create an advantage. Uh, I think creating an advantage is a good idea. Sure. Um, so based you have one on, in mind. Go right ahead. Um, based on the evidence in front of her and the context in which you framed it um, with the two momentum she seems to reach a decision um, and it, it isn't one that she would have come to on her own mm-hmm. if you hadn't been there to help guide her thinking but she definitely changes from the confused lost artist to a queen Yes. And she says, come with me. Yes, you want to live. (laughs) (laughs) 
um, and takes you by the hand and leads you um, down uh, out of the, the large open courtyard uh, into some of the side buildings and down a side alley. Um, and I think that might be a good spot to actually wrap things up. <laughs> I was going to say, what are you going to yeah, throw in? Yeah, like a good implant. <laughs> <laughs> you see uh, Captain Chuchalor is uh, being dragged off into the city um, by his new friend, um, yeah. uh, Iannis. And uh, uh, Commander Kitneel has just won the loyalty of <laughs> a dozen Nausicans <laughs> who are still in the prison facility, but he's so trying good. to arrange for their release. <laughs> Um, we have uh, Lieutenant Cullen is now re-entering the arena um, and going back to her role of combat scientist. Uh, and, <laughs> it's like which... I did want to. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like in the arena is not the place to ask her questions. Um, but I wanted to know. I want to get the chance to follow up with her about her diving into questions. Like how she started looking at things on her own. Um, and we can fit that in. It's easy enough to you after you win a boat because you're going to meet the queen after yeah, you win a boat. Yeah, then you get to go visit them. Yep. Um, so yeah, you can actually have that conversation, sure. So uh, you've just uh, won a successful boat and she's uh, giving you the accolades that are due you for your performance. Um, and how do you approach the subject of... So I know I kind of unglued your reality. How are you doing? <laughs> how do you want to well, approach um, that subject? Well, I mean, like, back, uh, basically, again, asking for, like, like a private meeting. Mm-hmm. When we get to, uh, back together, just sort of bluntly broach it. Like, I feel like we've been talking s- colloquially at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just... But yeah, basically, just, like, as soon as we get together, she's like, so, my lady... What did you discover through your investigations? Do Um, you know where we came from? She is fairly cagey as you ask her this. Like, she's looking around to see who might be... Which is unusual behavior. Like, she's she's a queen. They're usually just big and bold, and I don't care who freaking hears me. I'm a queen. But this time, she's being careful to be aware of her surroundings. As she answers, um, there is no information that I have access to. I I want to try to get like an actual physical paper and pen. Like get your hands on them? Yeah, and try to write her a note like under the table. Um, because I know that they're watching. Right. But, and I don't she know also if she could read my language is the problem. Yeah, um, and so that would be a bit of an issue as well. That might be something um, to handle next time then. But that would be something to dig into next time. So I think we'll, we'll pick it up next time um, and we'll get to that conversation then. Um... I think that's it for tonight. Unless anyone else wants to fit in something quick before we wrap? No, I think it's a good spot. Okay, thanks everybody for joining us uh, once again on this hilarious little uh, madcap adventure. Um, Thank you to Roll20 for your sponsorship and to our patrons. We love you guys a lot. Thank you very much for your support. It uh, means a lot to us. Helps us pay for our work and replace equipment um, and that kind of thing. Um, please, folks, if you're listening to this or watching this, um, wherever you do your podcast or on YouTube, Join us on Discord at eintu.space and you'll get where all these references and jokes in people's patron names come from. Um, It's a great community and just a wonderful place to hang out. Uh, Lots of happy people. Uh, If you are so inclined, please feel free to support us on uh, Patreon at staylucky.club. And I think that's it. We'll see you folks all next week. Bye. 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 Next time for more bold action.